All right, everybody, this is Ross. And if you are brand new to growing figs, this is gonna be the video for you guys. I am gonna explain in this video at least 10 different facts that you guys probably didn't know about fig trees. And also we're gonna answer a lot of the common myths that I hear a lot about on the internet regarding fig trees. Like, did you know actually that the fig is an inverted flower? So people ask me all the time, Ross, why isn't my fig tree flowering? Well, it is. When the figs are on the tree, they're just inside out. And inside of every single fig is actually 100 to 500 individual flowers, depending on the variety that you're growing. And also when you eat each, each individual flower, you're eating one fruit. So anytime you eat a fig, you could be eating potentially hundreds of, of fruits at one time. That's amazing. The world of fig trees is fascinating and very interesting. And the facts I'm gonna give you guys in this video uh, are really nothing short of that. It is a very unique fruit tree that's unlike other fruiting plants. And I've studied them extensively for a decade. Uh, I focused a lot of my 20s <laughs> learning about this fruit tree. So uh, sit tight and we're gonna explain a number of different facts for you guys. Now, the first thing that I wanna mention is that there's two articles I'm gonna put in the description for you guys. So if you are brand new to growing figs, the first one's gonna be a nice companion guide to this video. You can learn a whole lot more about fig trees. In that article is at least 20 different facts about fig trees that you probably didn't know about. The other article is actually a what I call the fig tree timeline. And this is a guide that I've written up so that you guys are, if you're ever lost at any point during the season, you know exactly what it is that you need to do for your fig tree. So you can just follow along with that chart and it makes it really easy to get a hang of growing your fig trees. So let's start off with some of the other facts. First of all, you probably didn't know that the fig tree is in the Moraceae family. It's related to breadfruit, jackfruit, the mulberry, and even a fruit called che fruit, which a lot of people have never heard about. Uh, so it's in a family of other fruiting plants, but even just the family of ficus, uh, there's at least 850 different species of ficus trees. And the fig tree that we're talking about today is ficus carica, or ficus carica, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, so 850 is quite a diverse uh, range of species in a family. As I said in the beginning of the video, the fig is an inverted flower. So a pollinator can't easily get to the flower parts and spread the seeds or the pollen. Um, so you have to have a particular wasp that is actually responsible for all the vast genetics that this species has. So not only is there 850 different species, but just within Ficus carica, there's over thousand, there's thousands of varieties that exist because of the fig wasp. And that's exactly what you see behind me here is me trialing over 50 to 75 different varieties of figs that have been propagated or bred throughout the years with the help of the fig wasp. Um, and so it's a pretty incredible range of genetic diversity because of that, where all the figs actually have these are some Vreba figs here in front of me of different varieties. You can see there's different shapes, sizes, colors, textures. You would not believe how diverse the world of figs actually is. Uh, and one fig certainly does not taste like another. I've had figs that uh, are creamy. I have, so, have some that are just like eating jam right off the tree. Others resemble a marshmallow. Others have more chewier textures. Others are more like a jelly fig. Some are sweeter, some are bitter, some have amazing berry flavors. Some taste like caramel, some taste like honey. Um, some taste like a straight, like a cherry, more like a cherry straight off of a cherry tree. So it's, it's actually really an incredibly tasty fruit as well in many different ways. Um, in fact, for me, it's my favorite fruit for eating purposes. Um, and I've tried a lot of different fruits. I love fruit, not just figs. Uh, and you can use figs, by the way, in so many different ways in the kitchen. You can dry them, you can freeze them, uh, you can bake with them, uh, you can make them into jam, jellies, preserves, can them, uh, you know, you name it. There's so many different things. You can even use, by the way, the leaves. The leaves you can harvest and make them into tea. You could dry the leaves, then make them into tea. Then you can also, wrap them with uh, with fish, similar to a grape leaf, 
you can stuff them with things. And that leaf here imparts somewhat of like a coconut flavor to the food that you're eating. The fig is incredible in so many different ways, but it's also been like a part of our history as humans for over 12,000 years. Uh, they found that the fig is actually dated, they carbon dated some figs in Mesopotamia to 12,000 years ago. So that is amazing that figs are that old. They're probably even older than that prior to the last ice age. Uh, so the fig tree has been around and has been kind of domesticated by humans for a very long time. And it's similar, I view them in a similar way. Think about a dog or canines, how we have domesticated them. And they have been, you know, kind of human and dog. It's the same thing with these fig trees. In fact, when the Romans were conquering different areas of Europe, they would go around and plant fig trees with them everywhere they went. And that's why you can find, partly why you can find fig trees all over Europe. You can even find them in England, you can find them in Croatia, you can find them in Russia, you can find them all over the place uh, because of the Romans. It is also in our religious texts. It's in myths, it's in, uh, there's so many different symbols for the fig. Uh, it's in the Quran, it's in the Bible. Um, you know, it's, it's all over the place in our history. In fact, interestingly enough, similar to what I'm doing here, King Louis XIV in France at Versailles was cultivating in pots 700 different varieties of figs. So <laughs> it's just really funny to me. Uh, if your spouse is ever, um, you know, complaining about all the different fig trees you have, you just say you're doing king's work. Uh, <laughs> So, you know, the fig is really important. And, and that, I think that's, you know, kind of the message I wanted to pass on. Um, and one of the craziest myths I hear about, though, is light figs versus dark figs or white figs and black figs. People talk to me all the time and they, they're like, Ross, I want, a, I want a light fig or I want a dark fig. And I look at them like, man, you should know the difference um, that really there's thousands of varieties and just because a fig has a certain skin color ha does not give it any indication of what it should taste like. The skin is actually irrelevant to what it should taste like. People when they talk about the the skin color like that they're usually referring to a light fig which is more like a honey fig or a fig that tastes like melons or a dark fig which can taste like berries but it's really the internal pulp color the skin color here so as an example, this fig that's more red, I'm gonna open up this one here for you guys as well, is so red on the inside that the pulp is almost sometimes purple or black, or both of them there at the top have a more red interior. And that's gonna lend it more towards having a berry flavor or at least a fruitier flavor. The ones down here at the bottom are more like sugar figs or honey figs because of that lighter interior. So, you know, that's a big one I hear all the time and it just really frustrates me. So that is um, one of the biggest myths. The other crazy myth that I hear a lot about is about pollination and wasps. People love the fig wasp, so we're finally gonna get to that now. They claim that there are dead wasps in every fig that you eat and that a wasp was at least at one point in every fig that you eat regardless of whether or not it's dead or not dead. And um, that's not true. So I would uh, actually love that if it, if it were true, because I have been purposely trying to pollinate my figs uh, and colonize the fig wasp here in the Philadelphia area with very minimal success. Uh, because what happens is when they are pollinated, they usually taste better, they're larger, and uh, they have a higher quality. So. Uh, you know, when people, when I hear people complain about a wasp inside of their fig, it's, uh, it's kind of strange because it's actually a good thing if that was the case, but, um, not every fig is pollinated. In fact, really about, I would say 90%, I estimate of figs that you guys grow at home will not have a wasp in them because the wasp is just not in your environment. It's not in your ecology or your area. The fig wasp can only survive temperatures above 12 degrees or 14 degrees Fahrenheit, somewhere in there. Um, so, and by the way, it's only really found in California or parts of California, not even really in the whole state. It's a large state. It's not found in Arizona. 
and it's not found in other neighboring states. It's only in California. It's only in the Mediterranean or parts of it. And so if you're going to eat a fig uh, at home and you don't live in these places, well, you're never going to have a wasp inside. Um, additionally, I find it's very strange that people complain about a dead wasp inside of there because when they are pollinated, it is true that a wasp takes pollen from a male fig, goes inside the female fig, pollinates it, and then dies. Um, that's kind of the short version of it. But what happens as the fig is ripening, the fig's uh, enzyme in the sap called physin will disintegrate the fig and kind of digest it in a way to the point where it is unnoticeable. You will never even knew, you never, you never even know it was there. So I think people hear this information, love to make a controversy over nothing and freak out over one little bug here and there. But to be honest with you, if you're gonna be worried about eating bugs or bugs in your food, you should just not eat food because it's in a lot of our food. Uh, you eat way more bugs than you realize. The fig is really just easy to grow. It's definitely one of the easiest fruiting plants that you can grow. I have grown them all here in the Philadelphia area, I'm telling you, and um, things like pears, apples, and stone fruits, which are the fruits that everybody knows and everybody loves, they're really difficult. Um, you have to be really talented to grow those fruits at a high quality. The fig is so easy that uh, they can get around with very minimal care. They're also really well adapted to a huge range of climates. There are people growing figs in Maine, people growing figs in Florida. There are people growing figs in California. There are people growing figs in Washington state. There are people growing figs in the middle of the country. All over the world, you can find people growing figs because first of all, they can go all the way down to zone seven without protection but you can actually protect them down to zone five and still get a reliable harvest. So if you really know what you're doing with the winter time and choosing a hardier variety, you can grow fig trees. It's pretty amazing. Now, if you live in a colder zone than that, you can grow them in pots and you only actually need, uh, that way you can move them away from the cold, by the way, but you actually only need about 120-ish frost-free days to reliably ripen figs. In fact, all of the figs in here, in this bowl, are called brabus, which is the first crop of figs because fig trees actually can ripen two crops, two different crops. Most people don't actually know about that because if you were to live in a really cold place and there's a lot of or a lot of pruning that you do on your fig tree every year, you could be completely missing out on the braba crop. And the braba crop ripens first on last year's wood, and they'll ripen about. Uh, 30 to 45 days earlier than the main crop. Um, and then they'll also ripen about 90 to 120 days after the trees wake up from dormancy. So you really don't need a whole lot of time to ripen brevas. So it's another amazing fact there. They're also really quite drought tolerant. In fact, they're really one of the most drought tolerant species of fruiting plants, but that's really only really when they're mature, when they're used to growing in uh, really dry soils. They definitely hunker down and get stronger root systems. They have this amazing ability to find the nutrients and water that they need, uh, but they certainly need a lot of water to produce reliable, high quality crops of figs. So in containers, especially, I water them almost every day now that it's 90 degrees, but if you had them in the desert, they were mature, you had some covering on the soil, they would be one of your better fruit trees to grow in those places. Um, so uh, let's see, what else? They can also handle the heat and they can handle the sun. They uh, can go all the way up to, as I said, a low of zero, uh, but they can go all the way up to like 120, maybe even 130 for very brief periods of time. I've experienced that myself in greenhouses. Um, I know people in um, the desert have also probably experienced that. Obviously you don't want that to happen, uh, but that's a pretty wide range of temperatures there. Um, now, if they do dry out, they won't die. So that's one other thing about them. They'll drop their leaves, they'll drop their fruits, and they'll kind of behave like a cactus. So very drought tolerant, heat tolerant, and they love the sun. The more sun you can give them, the better. And if I lived in a really arid place, difficult conditions, I would put the fig in the worst spot I had and put some other fruiting plants or other plants in a less difficult uh, spot in the yard um, because the fig tree can 
handle it. Uh, so really wide uh, adaptability to it. Tastes amazing. Uh, there's problem free, pest free. You can even grow them all the way down, by the way, into like four hours of sunlight, direct sunlight every day. You might even be able to go lower than that in two to three hours. I have some trees that really are not getting a whole lot of light and they're still fruiting. Um, so the fig is, it's unbelievable. And it's, by the way, unique. As I said, there, there is a, uh, two crops of figs. We talked about the Brava, how it forms on last year's growth. So if you remove all that growth, you won't get the Brava crop. Or if you prune your tree improperly, you won't get it. Not every variety produces it, but the main crop is really what makes the fig tree so special because it actually will fruit as the tree grows. So every leaf that forms, you'll end up getting a new fig. And that to me is just very unique compared to other fruiting plants. Again, I've tried all the fruits here. You can see as the tree has grown, the figs have formed here. Um, but there is really no other fruiting plant that will continuously flower, continuously fruit as it grows. You know, right here is a pomegranate next to me and the pomegranates flower once and that's it. But the fig just keeps going and going and going. So it is a really hard to kill, resilient, hardy, problem free. I mean, it's just, uh, it even grows quickly. Uh, it matures quickly. I mean, it fruits in less than uh, a year sometimes, uh, which is, yeah. So, you know, not convinced at this point, you gotta grow some figs. Uh, and if you want more information on them, please do me a favor, check out my blog, figboss.com. Hit the subscribe button for more videos like this and hit the like button. See you for the next one, guys. Take care.